Okay, so this is our typical uh, pool water test results and comes in a printed form showing us how much of each necessary chemical is in the water. So we take, we take a little sample bottle down to our pool shop. They run it through their, their testing machines. Free of charge, it's a great way to work out whether, your pool's, whether you're on top of your pool maintenance as far as the chemicals go and what anything that might be required, particularly during the summer when your pool is being used a lot and really important that the sanitation is correct for the people using the pool so no one gets sick. So top one here, free chlorine. We can see here we have a test result of 1.54. This is uh, for this particular example and the recommended range across here, two to four. So a little bit low in that free chlorine range and we'll show you later in the next video how that chlorine works and explain a lot more about the chlorine and how we can lift that level. Then um, also on here we have a total chlorine, combined chlorine, we don't need to worry about those two. The free chlorine is the only one we need to worry about with our pool. The pH then 7.6 is our test result and that's in our recommended range of 7.2 to 7.6. We normally set them at 7.6 so that's spot on. Um, that's actually we will also see later on um, we can alter that with our, with our acid and the acid's automatically looking after that via our chlorinator. So the only time we have to worry about that is when it runs out. So you'll see how to change that later on. Hardness. Hardness is uh, important because it adds calcium to the pool, which pr protects our pool surface. So if we don't have enough hardness over time, our pool surface will fall apart and break down. For example, the tiles start falling off because the water will draw calcium from the walls if it doesn't get it within the pool water. So hardness here, we have a reading of 408, the recommended range of 200 to 400, so we're just, just around the top end of that range there. And then we have our alkalinity, which is um, balances, keeps the chemical balance correct within our pool with the pH level, and it is 27 point six which is supposed to be 80 to 120 so obviously we're very low on that one in this case and that will need topping up with more alkalinity so that tells us then we can come down the bottom and have a look at our sheet and it'll say how to alter that alkalinity so the pool shops are very good in this regard they'll give us a bit of a rundown on um, what to do. For example, dissolve recommended dose in a bucket of pool water. Distribute about the surface of the pool with the filter running for four to six hours. Do not add more than four kilograms of buffer to the pool water in any 12-hour period. Let me just turn that phone off. That's better. And, and so the, another good reason to use the pool shop over um, some of the cheaper places you can purchase direct because they do give you really good information over the counter and in their readouts as well as giving the test results, these test results. Um, so alkalinity, then we have cyanuric acid, which is at 38 parts per million. The PPM start, stands for parts per million. Uh, recommended range is 30 to 100. So the, the cyanuric is another really important element during the summer particularly because it creates a chemical reaction in the water and prevents the sun from being able to steal too much of the chlorine out of the water. The sun is very effective at taking chlorine out of the water, especially from the top of the water. And it does, it's, it's less able to do this with this added cyanuric acid in the correct amount. Um, then we have some trace elements of copper, iron, um, which are metals that we don't want to get too much of in the pool. So if they get outside our recommended ranges, there's some um, metal removers that can be used in the pool to reduce those. And down the bottom, phosphates, which not everyone um, does testing for phosphates, but that's organic material in the pool, say mulch and leaf matter breaking down over time and creating a high phosphate level in your pool, which can cause some issues then. It, anything goes out in your pool with this balance and it can have a domino effect on the other chemicals. So really important to try and keep all the elements nice and balanced so that your pool water remains nice and clear and um, sanitized and 
good for the health of the swimmers at all times. So the last one on our list, salt is at 43.40. It needs to be between 4,000 and 5,000. The salt is really important because uh, it's required to create the chemical reaction which creates the chlorine, which keeps our chlorine levels high. So without once the salt dilutes down, probably once a year we may need to add a bag of salt just to keep that salt level correct for creating the chlorine. Our chlorinator will actually tell us on a display when the salt level is low with a low salt reading. Um, but with your regular testing, I would suggest about once a month during summer, especially when your pool's new, get a test done and a couple of times during the rest of the year and make sure you're on top of where it's at and keeping your water uh, sanitized, clean and, and chemically balanced. So the other thing to be aware of is that the more, the more your pool water is, um, is reduced with uh, splashing and you know, kids play as well as the, the sun evaporating the pool water, then the more we're watering down those chemicals. So, and that's why during summer, you know, we need to keep on top of those chemicals because the, the balance of the chemicals in percentage to the water reduces as we continue to add tap water to the pool. So that's the basics of the, of, the, uh, of the pool chemicals. We'll go into chlorine in a bit more detail in our next section. So always good to keep them balanced and clean.